Hey, what's your favorite movie? Do you, you have a favorite movie of all time? All time favorite movie? I'd be interested to know what your favorite movie is and why you think it's your favorite movie. Hey, I got a, I got a call from um, Elizabeth Wanick, Dr. Elizabeth Wanick today. And I just got to say that Elizabeth Wanick, uh, who is an MD, by the way, is probably, at least in my narrow estimation of things, although I've been doing this for 18 years, I've been studying homeopathy for 18 years, and the science of homeopathy, the physics, the physical chemistry of homeopathy, for 18 years, maybe a little more than that, 18 years in a few days, And this involves the physical measurements of the homeopathic solution, the homeopathic remedy. And it's basically a study of water, water dynamics, what I would call uh, hi, hi, hi. I forgot what I called it. There's a Latin word for it. Um, hydraulics. Hydro meaning water and Olex, whatever that means, it means organ. It's the organ of water. Water is like an organ. And it has this, you know that water has, more, has in electric tension, water is second only to mercury on the, other, on the um, periodic table. There's a, water is like, almost like pure electricity. In a way, it's like liquid ele electricity. And a few people have copped to this, like Gerald Pollock and Jerry Tennant is talking about stuff like that. I should post a, a uh, Gerald Pollock video on the John Beth Journal after to follow this video. Anyway, what I was saying about Elizabeth Wanick, she's got to be the greatest homeopathic physical chemical mind currently that I know of. She is the one person who I think really, other than myself, of course, she's the one person that I talk to or that has posted on my, um, on my journal who has demonstrated real insight, real knowledge about what the physical chemistry of the homeopathic remedy is. And I just want to say thank you for to her for that. And she deserves a bigger platform. She, she uh, the homeopathic industry or somebody, maybe we could start an organization to raise money to do this, to send her on a speaking tour. She's been to Europe. She's been to the Electrical Universe Conference. She's meeting these people. She's a, 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 an avid student of homeopathy. She's going to taking classes in homeopathy at, at uh, in Ireland. I mean, you never drag me to a class in homeopathy. I don't want anybody telling me what they think about it because all I've heard is from most commentators when it comes to the subject I'm interested in is stupidity. Or ignorance, or just not interested. You know what I mean? But that's changing. I'm starting to see a growing number of people, Nobel Prize winners. I've counted five Nobel Prize prizes involved with four different men <laughs> who have taken an interest in homeopathy, proven it, or demonstrated some aspect of it that, that makes it work. And there's Dozens of other people like that that, have, that are now looking at the dynamics of the water molecule and its application in human health. The basis of it being, or the foundation of it having been Hahnemann's homeopathy, what Hahnemann discovered in homeopathy. So we've been hitting some, some rough weather lately. Storm is battering Florida. <laughs> you know what this is? 
this hurricane that is threatening Florida, 12 mile surges, I mean, 12 foot size surges in Florida, that coming in Florida. I mean, this is only uh, October 9th now, 2018. You know what it is? It's God's wrath at Mar-a-Lago. It's God's taking out his wrath at Mar-a-Lago. Do you hear that, Don? You know, this is becoming a very uncivil situation that we have going on right now. And I think it needs correcting. I think it should be pointed out that, Don, you've been very uncivil. And it's not good. It's not It's it, because it causes a chain fucking reaction. You understand what I'm saying? Now everybody's doing it. Now it's getting real uncivil out there. People are starting to ball up, go into the fetal position, hide out and get scared. It's scaring people. Stop it. Just knock the fuck off of it. Stop doing it. God. I mean, just be nice. Will you? You're acting like a fifth grader. But, you know, maybe, you know, maybe in some kind of obtuse way, actually things are getting done. I mean, I don't know, but it doesn't seem to be worth it to me. It's not worth it to put everybody in this frame of mind. I don't care what the stock market's doing. I don't care how, how the, well the economy is doing. I don't care if it's capitalism. It should be fucking socialism, the way the, these capitalists have been handling it lately. Cut it out. Knock, on, knock it off. Stop it. Just knock it off. Get real. What do you think socialism is if it isn't? I mean, what's against socialism? Anti-socialism, right? These capitalists are all very anti-social people. They're very uncivil. It's all about me winning over you. Me having more money than every, anybody else in the whole world. That's really what it's about, isn't it? It's scrabbling for money. Well you, well, you don't find that in a socialist country. Not as much. You find some of it, but not, not to the degree you find it here in the United States. I mean, my God. Oh, my God. Have you ever lived in a socialist country? I lived in Hungary back in the 70s. I'll get around to what my favorite movie is in a moment. But in Hungary, there, was, there wasn't any crime. There weren't riots in the street. There was a Russian on every street corner with a machine gun. <laughs> but there weren't any riots in the street. And there was a, a high degree of camaraderie. They'd call each other comrade. Hey, comrade. How you doing today? And everybody had a job. There, there was a kid at the dorm I was staying in. I was going to school there. There's a kid in the dorm there that, hey, there's Hudson. Say hi to everybody, Hudson. Got to have our Hudson break. Come here. Come here. Say hi to everybody. Arr. He licks my face when I lie down. He came over just now and he licked my face. Didn't you? You licked my face. And I mean, he really intentionally was licking my face. I mean, he's getting in, licking my eye, licking my nose, licking my beard. Sorry, I need to, I need to shave. But, and then he laid down, he laid, laid down with his back up against my arm. You know, usually we sleep on opposite sides of the bed, I, you know, as if we're trying to get as far away from each other as possible. But he came down and intentionally put his back up against my arm after fully doing a real, you know, a tongue massage on my face. I think he, I think he kind of likes me, don't you? You kind of like me. So anyway, where was I? I was talking about civility or something. <laughs> My favorite movie, Hungary. I was in Hungary, and people, the guys just seemed to really enjoy just being with each other in a nice way. I didn't see anybody getting wildly drunk. I mean, they they drink a fair amount of beer. They're pretty well, their beer isn't all that great. Czechoslovakian beer is much better. They're noted for their palinka. But, you know what? Get a life. Come on. I mean, be social. So go, get back to loving each other. Do you think Jesus would have been a, would have been a capitalist? No, Jesus was a socialist, for crying out loud. Of course he was. You see, you're somebody, you, you, you believe in collective ownership. If somebody wants something of yours, you find this in Luke. Somebody wants something of yours, give it to him. So anyway... My favorite movie, and you're going to laugh at this, but I'm serious about this. My favorite movie 
No, it's not the one about you. <laughs> is Pee Wee's Big Adventure starring Paul Rubens as Pee Wee's as Pee Wee? This came in the movie that came out back in the eighties, I think, kind of later eighties. And I was so impressed by this movie that I diagrammed it out. I actually sat down and, and discovered it had like it has fifty two scenes, you know, for two weeks in the year. There was something very unique about this movie, and I trying to figure out what exactly it is. I mean, it seems to be it's like a piece of its own genre. You know what I mean? And the start and the leading character is this guy that has seemed to have total self unawareness of who he is or what he's doing or what a bizarre character he is. But not only that, the people around him in this story don't seem to have any awareness of how you, how bizarre he is. He's kind of a man child. And, you know, kind of like everybody kind of knows him and like, yeah, hi, how are you doing, Pee Wee? Yeah, good to see you again today. But nobody's impressed with the bizarre, his biz kind of bizarre man-child behavior, which is technically, you know, he opens up with this real and Rube Goldstein breakfast, breakfast machine, making him breakfast, you know, carrying things over wires and dropping things into buckets and I mean, it's just total magic, but it just hit me that what really makes Pee-wee's Big Adventure such an amazing film is that every scene is like a story unto itself with its own little cast of characters. He's walking down a dark street and suddenly he's confronted by a gang of toughs. We don't like strangers around here. You know, he goes, ah, and they run away. And that's that. That's that scene. That's that little storyline. You know, he goes to a he goes to a psychic to find out where he's trying to find out where what happened to his bike. And she says, um, she says, he, he asked me a question. He says, why am I here? And she goes, because you want something. And it's like he empties his pockets onto the table. <laughs> Give her all his money. Take it. <laughs> yes, yes. It's my bike. You know, where's my bike? And she looks across the street and <laughs> she sees this sign on the side of a building that said Al and Moe's Furniture Resale or something like that. She says, it's in the Alamo. In the Alamo? Where in the Alamo? It's in the basement <laughs> of the Alamo. The bike gets stolen by the, by the evil forces in this movie and and carted off to Hollywood to be in a movie <laughs> and ends up with a big chase scene of him getting his bike back on. Anyway, I don't want to spoil it for you if you've already seen it, but I mean, if you haven't seen it. But that's what I like about Pee-wee's Big Adventure. By the way, speaking of Ray, um, how much more time do I have? Much more time. I don't. I don't know. It doesn't say what. How much more time I've got? It's not showing me the time. Oh well. Anyway. Speaking of rape, the remedy, the homeopathic remedy for rape, is Staphylococcus aureus. Oh, and along that line, speaking of rape, the Pee Wee's Big Adventure shows up something that, or I should say, Don has a relationship to Donald Trump. When you look at Donald Trump, he's the same kind of a character as Pee Wee. He's living in his own universe. And he's, um, and everybody seems to, everybody seems to think it's okay. You know, I mean, that, that it's just kind of normal or something. But it's, it's a, kind of, kind of like Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I don't know. Go see them, rent the movie if you can. Tell me what you think. So anyway, the uh, the remedy for Donald Trump, by the way, is pulsatilla. Trump is this very platina character, homeopathically, what we call platina. It's usually the remedy that's used for narcissism. And he's extending this character into other people, like a chain reaction. So... Um, We should be interested. Well, what what's the remedy for that? 
Did you know that, that there's remedies and anti-remedies? In other words, the ones that will um, neutralize it, counteract it. And uh, like coffee, too much coffee can be counteracted by um, Nux Vomica. Nux Vomica is a pretty good remedy for poisoning, <laughs> for being poisoned. The remedy for platina, the counter remedy, is pulsatilla. Pulsatilla nigra. Isn't that interesting? That fascinating? So you might want to try that if you're having too much Trump. You might want to try Pulsatilla. You know, if you look at his wife, what, Melanie? What's her name? Melina? Melina? Nice, nice lady. I, you know, my, my sympathies to you, Mrs. President. She's a good, I think she's a pulsatilla. She's a good example of pulsatilla. So you might want to take, read the, read Clark's uh, dissertation on pulsatilla or look at um, Peter um, Chappell, Chappell at his uh, book, Emotional Healing with Homeopathy. It's really a brilliant book. And it talks about the emo more the emotional character of these remedies. Look up Platina and look up uh, pulsatilla and see and see what you think. Clark lists pulsatilla as the antidote to to Trump, <laughs> the platina character. Which obviously Pee Wee is a platina character too. If you want to look at go back to Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Ah, <sighs> well, I feel better. I've gotten some things off my chest. Oh, the remedy for for um. Rape is Staphysagria for being penetrated. It's often used for trauma induced by surgery. So if you're feeling a little abused, you might want to look at, um, take a look at Pulsatilla. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, why not? Pulsatilla is kind of a bunch of crybabies. Crybaby, Pulsatilla crybaby. The remedy of sheep. Um, Look, look, uh, look, the, um, well, where was I? Oh, I forget now. Pulsatilla and, uh, Pulsatilla is a counteract staph, no, staph sagria. Yeah, check out staph sagria. I'm sorry, I'm getting all muddled. I guess I've been on, on too long, Chinese magician. <laughs>